Hey guys, my name is Goose. And if you've ever wanted to create a life of freedom, choice and abundance through property investing, but you felt confused, unsure of what to do or how to get into the market or how to make the right decisions, well, I'm here to pull back the curtain and explain exactly how you can do that. And this is the episode for you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you none other than Goose McGrath. Goose, how are you going, my man? I'm absolutely fantastic. Prosper, how are you? Fantastic. I'm really excited for this show today. I mean, given your expertise and how you have actually grown Dash Dots to be um, one of Australia's fastest growing companies, I can't wait for us to get into how you actually manage that and also how you are creating Australia's leading uh, portfolio growth partner group. And you're also a podcast host, um, you know, of the in Investor Lab. And also, um, you know, you're helping passionate people seek a life of freedom, choice and abundance in Australia. Now, talk to me, Goods. How did you actually get started? I noticed that you got the talk to me goose in there. You did well to integrate that into the conversation. You, that was seamless. Now, talk to me goose. That was you did. That was great. Uh, so great that I forgot your question. What, what do you want to know? What was the original? <laughs> Tell <laughs> oh, so, you knocked me. <laughs> Tell me how you actually got started. Um, you know, on your okay. journey, and yeah, yeah, perfect. And, that's a great. That's a great. It's a great story, right? Because. Um, as I understand it, the people listen to this and the people that, um, that are in your community, they're people that are starting and growing and scaling their business, right? And I have done that too. So less than four years ago, actually, if we go back about five years, um, I was actually running a different company in a different industry, right? So we were organizing music and arts festivals all over the world. Me and my partner, Gabby, though, we were basically uh, like I was living on my office floor. I was broke. The business was, was broken. I had nothing to show for it. I had about like $100 in the bank account. It was like, life was pretty grim. And Gabby and I started going, well, what are we going to do with our life? How are we going to get out of this? This doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. And we thought, I know the secret to financial freedom, we'll just go buy a property, right? Because we just thought you buy a property and somehow magically your ticket box, you become financially free. And so armed with that very, very, very small of incorrect information, we went and successfully bought the wrong property in the wrong place at the wrong time and lost a bunch of money. Now, people might be asking, how do we get the money? We actually borrowed some money off our families in order to be able to afford the deposit, right? And then we, we bought the wrong thing and stuffed it up. And so that was not exactly what we were thinking was going to happen. And so naturally that as entrepreneurs, we actually went, oh, hang on a second. How does this work? Like, why do some properties go up? Why do some properties go down? How could we fix this? How could we um, help other people avoid making the same mistake? So we went down a, a rabbit warren of trying to effectively solve the property market. About a year or so later, we ended up starting Dashdot. When we started Dashdot, we had $5,000 in a bank account, no safety net, no backup, no investors, had never worked in real estate before, didn't know any other property investors, didn't have a network, nothing. We'd bought an investment property, which I affectionately call the crack den because it was basically a, what you would call a fixer-upper. The idea was that we would move into it, we would renovate it and, and all of this kind of stuff. We, we moved in, started the business, didn't start the renovation. And during that initial phase, we literally were choosing, do we spend money on ads? To, to, to do lead gen or do we spend money on food? And we would choose ads and then we would go to the supermarket and we would eat food off the shelves <laughs> during the day. Now it was how, in the first couple of months, that was how raw it was at the start. Now, we, and that being said, we, we learned, we'd never really done sales or marketing before. We learned sales, learned marketing, learned to grow and scale our business. Started once we got traction, we went from about zero dollars to about 180 grand a month pretty quickly. We started growing pretty quickly. We then thought we were legends, rock stars. We thought we'd solved business. We just thought we were heroes, got full of ego, had no idea what we were doing, started hiring people, didn't understand what we we're doing, didn't have any systems, didn't have anything. And then we started, going, oh, this isn't actually going how we wanted it to go. And so we said, hang on a second, we need to step back, start again. So we, so we downscaled, downsized, stripped right back. And then COVID hit. And then, uh, and then we had to, we were forced to strip back because we lost 97% of our revenue. Um, and then we basically rebuilt from there on a much better foundation. And now, um, yeah, we're the 14th fastest growing technology company in Australia. We help property investors all over Australia to build um, prolific, profitable property portfolios. Everything we've done has been designed around helping, how do we help our clients to achieve their goals? And because of that focus on our clients and innovating around our clients' needs, that's the thing that's helped us scale pretty quickly. Does that kind of give you the summary? Absolutely. And I really appreciate you, you know, giving us the raw and, um, you know, uh, what's and all story there, because some people actually think 
you know, when they see somebody like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, that, you know, something mm. was handed to them. But I really like the fact that you actually started, um, you know, from the bottom. And I also appreciate the lessons that you'd have learned because a lot of people in your space are probably just textbook um, advisors who pretty much just um, have learned something from a textbook and also, um, you know, want to implement that into the marketplace. Now, what do you find is the biggest um, you know, biggest issue or problem that stops people from actually achieving the life that they should be living from what you have, um, you know, discovered working with all these people so far? Yeah, well, I think the first part comes down to um, really at the core, it comes down to beliefs and goals and all, all of that kind of stuff. Most people don't actually have a clear idea where they're trying to get to or why, right? And that goes for people in business, but also goes for people investing in property. I've spoken to thousands of investors over the last couple of years and every single one, I'm not say, I'd say 90 plus percent of them all have the exact same goal, 10 properties in 10 years and hundred thousand dollars passive income. And it's like, well, that may be true for some people, but if over 90% of people have exactly the same words that they are using, that says to me that they are not their own genuine thoughts. Somebody has told them that that should be the goal. But when you really, really cook it down for people, um, most people don't necessarily need that specific goal. And that specific goal isn't actually um, necessarily relevant in their case. So where people go wrong, firstly, comes down to how they're thinking, what their belief systems are, and, and how are they mapping to where they want to get to. The kind of second part to that question, though, is if you look specifically at property investors, why is it that more people aren't successful in property investing? Because there's actually a massive issue. 99% of property investors never achieve the goal that they set out to do. So if we break down that goal and just put the 10 properties in 10 years of thing aside, macro, the reason people want to invest in property is because they want to create a life of freedom, choice, and abundance. They want to be able to live life on their own terms, do what they want, when they want, with who they want. And they want to be able to live a life of impact and meaning and joy and all of that kind of stuff. That's the goal. I've never met an investor who doesn't want to invest to achieve a version of that outcome. But 99% of property investors never get there. And in fact, 71% of property investors never get past the first property. 90% of property investors never get past the second property. From what I can, from what I have seen working with investors over the years, and we've built sophisticated modeling tools, you probably need about five properties. Now, could be four, could be six, right? And certainly more is great, right? But as a baseline, we're what we call like getting to a platform where you can hit save is typically around five properties and only 1% of property investors ever get to five properties. So that points to a systemic issue with an understanding of how it works. And back to your point, there are a lot of people in the property space, but not many people in the property space think critically around how does this work and what is the end goal? Most people get into the property space because they're like, I can make money being a real estate professional. To be completely honest, that thought has never crossed my mind. The thought, only thought that ever crossed my mind was like, this is really interesting and what an interesting problem to solve and think about all of the people that we could help. So approaching it from a blank canvas has allowed us to think about how do we strategically get past those roadblocks for people? Because if people can avoid getting stuck, which is why they never get past number one or number two, because they buy the wrong property in the wrong place at the wrong time, they potentially can't get more finance, they can't scale their property portfolio, they effectively get stuck. If we can stop people getting stuck then there is no functional reason they can't get to the required amount of properties to achieve their own personal goals. So I think it's all kind of tied in together. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I really appreciate that you're saying that because obviously the market is awash with the statements that you are talking about 10 properties in 10 years. And you can tell when somebody regurgitates things of that nature, um, you know, they're just listening to, you know, sort of some sort of mainstream uh, publication or media, or they just read it or heard it from Auntie Sally um, at a barbecue. Now, there's a big gap in the market for education, because I think it mm. is an education problem that is actually, um, you know, stopping people from actually working towards building a portfolio. I mean, Australia is one of the luckiest countries, but you help people build scalable, profitable mm. property portfolios by actually finding the right property, the right place at the right time, so they can actually achieve their goals uh, faster and with way less risk. How do you tackle this? In Yeah, so it's a great question because you touched on something interesting there. The education is the issue. That is true. However, in my experience, there are a lot of people out there who get educated and do nothing. 
So education doesn't necessarily solve the problem. And in fact, um, I am of the belief that it is actually far more sophisticated than most people um, can understand. Real estate is the single largest asset class in the entire world. The single largest asset class in the entire world. Larger than all of the companies in the world combined, right? That is huge, but it's also the least understood. It's the biggest black, it's the biggest gray area. Most people just don't understand it. And in fact, the reason it's really hard to stand is because it's exceptionally complex. And so in order for us to be able to identify the right property in the right place at the right time consistently, we've had to build really sophisticated systems. So we've got like six PhD data scientists on the team. We've invested over the last year, over the last couple of years, about 2 million bucks just in developing research and development products to be able to, to do that, to do that consistently in time and time again. And so the difference between success and failure is often uh, a result of the information and understanding, right? Or the access and understanding that you have. So for example, in the share market, it is actually a lot easier to get access and understanding and to make better decisions, right? The accessibility of the information is, is much greater. The accessibility of the platforms is much greater. The information you can find is much greater. With real estate, it's a big black hole. Most people have no idea how to do the research, let alone what research they need to do, and they don't have access to the data and the information. Just on data alone, we spend you know, six, seven figures, uh, sometimes it was six, six figures a month just on data, let alone the rest of the stuff that has to go into actually trying to work it out. So most people don't have the capability to get access to the tools and the insights and the understanding that they need to make those decisions. Now, the way we work is we've tried to break down all those barriers, right? So we do a couple of things. Yes, we've built sophisticated um, ways to be able to identify the right property in the right place at the right time. But then we actually do the work, we, we do the work for people, right? So rather than going, hey, here is the tool set or here is a course, here are the things you need to know and now off you go. We actually want to guarantee people success because do you think you are more likely to achieve your fitness goals? If someone said to you, let's say, let's say you wanted to lose some weight and build some muscle. If somebody said to you, great, here's a, here's a PDF and it's got a 10 step plan. Just go this and these are your gym routines and just go do that um, five days a week and eat like this and you'll achieve your goals. Do you think you're more likely to be successful if you had that PDF or if you had a personal trainer and nutritionist every day saying, do this, eat that every single day, do this, eat that and coach, right? And somebody to get you there. So we've taken it on upon ourselves to actually go, well, let's do the work for you because the average investor the average investor, the average DIY investor takes around 20 months and a total of 555 hours. Now that is research done by um, Real Estate View. That's not Aaron. 555 hours over 20 months just to buy a property, just to buy a property. That's come from, that's from like, okay, I want to buy a property. What type of property should I buy? Doing their own kind of research and then buying a property. And then statistically speaking, they get it wrong because statistically speaking, 71% of property investors never get past the first one and 90% never get past the second one. So they'll spend 550 hours over nearly two years to statistically speaking, buy the wrong property. That is a big problem. Like that is a massive problem, right? So what we do with clients is like we go, we, we, we know we've got hundred percent success rate with our clients of, of our clients having a positive ROI and growing and all of that kind of stuff, which is pretty unheard of. We collapse that down. It still takes us a couple of months to, to do the process, but we do the work. So for our clients, it only takes them five hours on average, five hours of contact time. So from 555 down to five hours of work. And then we do the process uh, in the space of a couple of months. So we've really tried to take all of the risk out of it to make sure that people can achieve their goals. Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously when you're um, investing, timing the market is actually much more important than timing the market. And um, the fact that you are handholding these, um, you know, people that you're going to be working with, mm. I assume you would have some sort of a criteria because I had to stop a whole bunch of people that were already coming to find out how you can help them. What sort of people do you take on board considering you are sh shaving off almost, um, you know, a thousand percent of, uh, of time that they would have been taking and going through by themselves? Yeah, so... We, we don't, we don't discriminate massively. Right. So a lot of people, a lot of companies out there will be like, we serve medical professionals to do this, or you know what my mum and dad, they weren't, they weren't like business owners. They weren't medical professionals. They were average people. And I wish that they had the opportunity to benefit from this kind of thing as well. 
So our mission is to transform the way the world invests. And to that degree, we want to transform form as many lives as possible. In fact, our mission over the next few years is to, over the next 10 years is to help 50 million people globally to make more informed, more intelligent property decisions. So to that degree, um, we're fairly non-discriminatory. Now, that being said, it do, you do have to have, meet some financial criteria because you've got to be able to afford to buy a property. You've got to be able to do all this kind of stuff. So typically speaking, typically speaking, you want to have 60 or 70 grand cash in the bank. Now, people might be like, but I've got a house and I've got equity. Does equity count as cash? Well, if you can take that equity out of your home so that you can then use it for investment, then yeah, that would con we would consider that to be cash. But you need to, so I would say on average, you probably need a, as a starting point about 70 grand, right? Plus you also need the capability to borrow kind of 250 to $300,000 at a minimum, right? At a baseline minimum to make it effective to be able to work with us. Now, can you buy properties cheaper than that? Yes, you can, right? But there's also there's also a cost of work. I mean, there's, there's also like cost of acquisition, there's stamp duties, there's all of this kind of stuff. So you need you need to have all of that all of that kind of stuff in line. Now, what we what we are the best in Australia, probably the best in the world, is helping people to build scalable property portfolios. So whereas one whereas whereas often the way it's seen in real estate is that you buy a property. And then you kind of, it's just kind of this boring, confusing thing. And you kind of just leave it. And you kind of do nothing. Then like maybe like five or 10 years later, maybe, maybe you'll try and buy another one. Or like on average, our clients are sort of buying a property, at least a property a year, and sometimes much faster. We've helped people to buy five properties in two years, 10 properties in two years with one of our clients. So we actually have a, have a process to make sure that we can help you to scale your property portfolio. So even if you're starting off a fairly low base, which are those, some of those numbers there, it's still possible to move really, really quickly and to achieve a significant amount of freedom. In fact, one of our clients was in a similar position to that, relatively low single income, not a huge amount of capital to start with. She ended up buying three properties in 12 months and then had enough rent coming off those properties to be able to fund her to rent and live in the the place that she most wanted to, a little town, a little city, a little town by the beach and all that kind of stuff. So she was able to unlock that freedom in 12, a degree of freedom in 12 months, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. And now that somebody is probably thinking, okay, I suit that uh, portfolio, um, you know, your platform brings in the whole kit and caboodle, uh, you know, when it comes to managing and, um, you know, investing prop uh, property have you sort of gamified this or what is actually going to be um what 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 are people actually going to expect once they start working with you yeah it's a good it's a good question right so we, we focus on uh the way we think about it is um uh systemize the back end so we can personalize the front end so yes we're very much a technology driven organization however we keep it super human, right? So in every interaction that uh, that our clients have with Dashdot, it is with an individual, with a human being. We have platforms and communication platforms that we use, so digital platforms, so you can access, you got 24 seven access to your account manager just from an app in your pocket and stuff like that. So it's super easy and super frictionless, but at the same time, you do have a dedicated client account manager. You do have like a dedicated acquisition team. You do have a whole, whole bunch of humans. So the interaction that you get, you get access and understanding to the information and the data, but it's not like a platform where you would kind of like go and try, like we literally you literally have highly skilled highly empathetic like highly you know highly integrous individuals that are going to hold your hand and walk you through the whole process um which i think is one of the most fun parts about it now transparently um when we start before we started the business we didn't have a team to do this so gabby and i bought our own properties we didn't buy properties for a couple of years because we started a business and that kind of in, impeded our ability to borrow. But then once we could borrow again, we're like, Hey, we've got this amazing team. We'll go through this like a client. We'll do we, like, let's, let's effectively use our own service. And it was, it was mind blowing to the degree to, to the degree that it almost felt like cheating. It almost didn't even feel like we were buying properties. And this is, I'm the guy who built the business with my partner, Gabby. Even I, I was shocked. I was like, I can't believe how, fun, frictionless, and easeful this process is because of the individuals and the support that you get along the way. Absolutely. Now I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I now know what it is that you guys are doing and congratulations for having built something that is well needed in the marketplace like this. But obviously there's quite a lot of stuff like you mentioned earlier on that, you know, um, is involved in the whole property journey. Um, mm. I, is there anything that you then do not do uh, considering you're already doing everything for the investors, but what is it that then investors need to sort of, um, you know, fend for themselves just so that, you know, they, everybody is quite clear on what you can and what you can't do. Well, we've tried to remove any of that prosper. Right. This is actually the point. A lot of other property professionals out there might say like, we'll find you a house, but then you deal with the rest of it or, or some, something like that. 
but that to, to me, that's not a very client centric approach, is it? Right. So we basically said, if there is a thing that is involved in you buying this house and build, not just buying a house, but actually building a portfolio, we're going to be there to do it along the way. So we manage the entire search and acquisition process. We manage all of the negotiations and the actual acquisition process of, of, of acquiring and buying the property. We will um, coordinate building and pest inspectors, review the agreements and all of that kind of stuff. We will coordinate conveyances. We will manage the entire set settlement process. We will help you find the right property manager for you. Now, at the end of it, you're going to end up owning a house and that property manager is going to work directly with you. And the conveyancer is probably going to talk to you at some point because you're buying the house and they're representing you as well. And so you've got this contact with these professionals, but there's no fend for yourself element to it. We literally take care of all of it all the way through to settlement. Then after settlement, we do a debrief and a recap and we work out and we talk about the next steps and work out what you need. And then we provide ongoing support. Even after that, there's no limit to that. We don't, it's not like we will be ongoing support for 12 months. It's like, if you're a client, you're a client for life. As far as we're concerned, we consider it to be a lifelong relationship. And so what we then do is we do periodic performance reviews. And so a performance review includes um, valuations, rental assessments, and all of that kind of stuff on the property so that we can help you to understand when and how to go again. And that goes back to the idea of that kind of personal trainer analogy that I used earlier. We're not there to just be like, hey, do this thing. Great. Let us know. Let us know if you want to buy another house. That's, that's not it at all. Our goal isn't for you to isn't to buy houses. Our goal is to help you to build a portfolio that is going to give you a life of freedom, choice, and abundance. And so it is our obligation to be the person that is going to be there to hold you accountable. Hey, Prosper, did you know that your property has grown by 15%? Did you think it might, might be a good time for us to start thinking about doing the next one? Let's like let's keep the momentum up. Let's keep going. And it's because of that, our clients are able to go so much faster. And because they're able to go so much faster, they're able to achieve freedom much faster. And so all of this is tied into the goal of helping to collapse time to get our clients to their desired goals sooner. Uh, this seems like a service that a lot of people would want to dive into. But just, you know, now that a lot of people are already picking up their phones, ready to call you goose, it's a good thing you've got a team to be uh, dealing with all the inquiries that are going to come from <laughs> this video here. Could you sort of just give us a rough estimate of how this actually works? Is this a subscription uh, basis or are we paying as we are going um, as, go. as and when you unlock a property or as and when you unlock uh, a level within this? Um, yeah. yes. yes. Totally. So we've got different, we've actually got different services. We've got a range of services. So we do property portfolio growth planning. We do um, property acquisition. There's a whole bunch of other, there's a kind of a range of services. The, serv the service services and packages range from, range from about $3,000 up to about $36,000. So there's a, there's a big spectrum in there, depending on where you're at in your journey, what you're trying to achieve, what, what the best next strategic and best and best priority is going to be for, the, for you. Right. So it does, it does vary. Typically the way that it is, it's, um, it's a fixed fee. So there's no commissions. There's no kind of sliding scales. There's no nothing like that. It's typically fixed fee, super clear, super transparent. And it's all paid up front. Once we agree on what the service package is going to be, we pay for that up front. Then we execute simple as that. So it's super clear. We don't take any commissions, kickbacks or referral fees from anyone. So there's no kind of weird dodgy back end kind of stuff. Everything's crystal clear and we're always acting in our client's best interest. So, it's, so once we decide what the best solution is, fixed fee paid up front, then if it's time to, to, to expand on that and to get you to grow your portfolio, then we just come up with another arrangement and we make a do a fixed fee arrangement again and off we go. This sounds very, very interesting. I mean, Goose, you can be my wingman anytime, my property wingman now if somebody wants to actually get started and uh wants to fly with you goose how do they get started um just head to dash dot dot com dot au that's the easiest bet or if you want to pick us an email straight away just head to uh, just send us an email to hello at dash dot dot com dot au but if you go to dash dot dot com dot au you're able to check out the website have a look at some videos we've got loads of resources on there there's guides there's if you're thinking about getting started in investing, there's resources you can download. We've got a podcast too that you can access, the Investor Lab. Um, so there's lo we try and put as much value out there as possible so that people can learn and grow and become more successful investors. And we're, we're there to help when the time is right. Absolutely. And obviously, if you're watching this, you want to start your journey or if you've already started your journey, I'll be putting all the details uh, in the bottom so that you can actually contact the team at Dash Dot and you can actually, uh, you know, get your property investment uh, issues sorted. And like they say, they're going to be handholding you every step of the way. Now, I mean, Goose, there's a lot around this, um, you know, uh, topic that we can 
touch on. But obviously, there's that skeptic that always listens to Auntie Sally at, um, you know, Thanksgiving dinner or at a barbecue. And they're being told that, yes, we've just come out of a pandemic. The market is just looking uh, the other way. We are going to be going into turbulent economic times. And, you know, it's best for you to just hang on to um, you know, whatever money you have and wait until the market is ready. What's your advice to people that are ooming and eyeing, um, you know, around wanting to get started on their property journey? Well, I've got a lot of opinions on that. So strap yourself in. So firstly, um, the general consensus is almost always wrong. So Mark Twain's got a famous quote, which I love, that when you find yourself standing on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. And as Warren Buffett says, I don't really like the saying, but I like the intent. He said, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Um, now, I don't like the, the terms fearful and greedy, but the context of it is that you need to think in a contrarian manner in order to capitalize on the opportunities that are around. The other thing that I want to say to that too, is if like, the, the property market actually isn't down. A lot of people are saying like the property market is crashing and stuff, but that is not actually 100% true. The, the fact of the matter is some markets are down, but the problem is the total dollar value of the markets that are down is so great that it pulls down the aggregate average of the rest of the country. So I'm specifically speaking of like Sydney. The Sydney market is extremely valuable. The market, just like if BHP, which is the largest business on the ASX, if that dropped by 10%, the whole ASX would drop, right? And, and that'd be because it'd pull down the aggregate value. And if we look at, for example, the GFC, in, during the GFC, the median sales price in, in um, every kind of region or whatever dropped. You can see the line just falls off a cliff during the GFC. We did an analysis of it though, and 63% of suburbs over that same period of time actually grew in value. So 63% of suburbs went up in value at a time when all of the trend lines were going down. And what that points to is the fact that there are markets within markets. There's 15,264 towns and suburbs in Australia, and they all move uniquely differently. In fact, it even goes down a little bit more granular than that. They operate at sub, sub levels to suburbs and sub levels to like neighborhoods and streets, and they all operate independently. And so being able to identify the right property in the right place at the right time means you're able to invest in any market and still make significant gains. I can tell you for a fact that in the we, we're buying in the top 1% of suburbs, so roughly 150 suburbs uh, around the country uh, right now. And I can tell you for a fact that all of those suburbs are going up in value. None of them are going down in value. And none of them, and we've built prediction and forecasting models and none of them even look like they're going to go down in value. And so that, that can tell you that there's an, actually another story here. The problem is most, uh, most information that people get is either misconstrued or misunderstood or misrepresented, which is, and that comes from uh, a media that doesn't understand how the property market works. It comes from people here saying conjecture at barbecues and stuff like that. And that is actually setting people back. And in a time of inflation and in a time of all of this kind of stuff, the single asset class that performs the best in all of this kind of stuff is real estate, right? It is the most stable, the most consistent asset class in the world. Again, it's least understood. So people get confused and they go, oh, maybe I shouldn't participate or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, but I absolutely fundamentally disagree. I remember saying exactly the same thing um, in 2020 through the middle of, through the middle of 2020, I was saying now is the time to buy. And everyone was saying, no, 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 it's crazy. The world's going to end. And I specifically remember saying to my brother at the time, I said, mate, you've got until March, 2021 to get into the market. By the time you get to March, 2021, it's all going to take off again and you're going to get left behind. And then like clockwork, we hit March, 2021 and it all just skyrocketed, right? And so it's the same thing now. And so the, the, the way to be a successful investor is to be a contrarian investor and to be able to think independently and to be able to look at the information and get the insights to make better, more informed, more intelligent property decisions. Fantastic. Now I can see why you are actually at the top of one of the fastest growing companies, because obviously you are dedicated, you know, to really helping other people be, do and have a happier existence. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you can understand and appreciate the time that Goose, um, you know, has given to us because half of the time we might be, um, you know, running around in, in, in circles, not knowing exactly what to do, who to talk to and how to actually get started. And as, as you have noticed, the team at Dash Dot will do the hard yards so that you don't have to. They will shave all the um, you know, hours spent in you trying to navigate this whole complex world of real estate investment where you can actually, you know, um, sit back, 
and relax and watch the goose actually lay the golden egg for you. Now, because we could go on, I have actually run out of dead jokes, um, you know, so I think we're going to have to end it here. Sounds good to me. I've really enjoyed this. Thanks. Fantastic, man.